and welcome back to some more Final Fantasy XIV. Let's dive straight into it. So some of our comrades have fallen, died, I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, so we're looking for a way to understand what the hell is going on. So we're passing ways. Zenos is back. And it's got a big fat booty. The Popularis no longer present an obstacle. Now is the time to bring the Empire's might to bear. A word from your radiance is all it takes. But one word, and the Imperial Army will fall upon Alamigo as a pack of bloodthirsty wolves and tear that feeble nation apart. Have you no words for me? Despite the lengths I go to, an emissary playing the part of a fool. When first I took this face, I swore to use all of my knowledge, all of my power, to further the cause of the Empire. My deeds stand testament to my commitment. And with this adamant flesh at my disposal, I could destroy the Icon Slayer as easily as one might swat a fly. Why do you I don't hesitate? think so. <sighs> Our enemy is resourceful. Though victory is certain now, it will not remain so indefinitely. Deliberate if you must, but be quick about it. We'll speak again when you have unburdened yourself of doubt. Until then, I take my leave. Father. That's a big S armor though. Be the one to sigh. Hmm? I played my part to perfection. I had earned my rest, and then, thanks to La Habrea's crowning act of idiocy, our favorite emissary sees fit to summon me back. Who the hell are you? Elidibus was ever a warrior. A most tiresome trait, would you not agree? What? Have you no words for me either? No matter. I've long grown weary of this mummery. Now, my dearest grandson, let me remind you of your place in the sort of terms. Holy shit. You do not make judgments, you administer them. Swiftly and to the letter. Naught else is your concern. Mm -hmm. 
Elidibus may be an insufferable bore, but he is no fool. His choices as emissary seldom err. If aught threatens the balance twixt light and dark, it falls to you to remove it. Be it by your own hands or by your armies, you have ample means at your disposal. That is why this empire exists, why I built it. Oh dear, have I touched a nerve? You always were an easy one to read. I pity you, I do. As they say, ignorance is bliss. And I know how much happier you would be not knowing the things you know. The Founding Father was an Assian, and he created the Empire solely for the purpose of sowing the seeds of chaos. Interesting. <laughs> Don't take it personally. I merely do my duty. To bring about a calamity requires no small amount of power, and there is no surer way to obtain such power than by collecting powerful pawns. To that end, I have labored long and hard, and I must say I am quite pleased with my handiwork, paltry though it seems in comparison to Alec. I'm sure that was not enough. You fiends are over fond of your own voices. Mark me, Asian. Man is the master of his own destiny. No way. All Such right. Yeah, that makes more sense. Time and energy, <laughs> both yours and mine. Lest you forget, you are emperor now. If you wish to spout drivel about man's destiny, save it for the masses. It will serve to give them a sense of purpose, and you client pieces for the game. Oh, do stop sulking, boy. You of all people should understand. Ours is a struggle to restore both mankind and the world to their rightful state. Viewed thus, our goals are one and the same. Um, I'm guessing this is not what they're expecting.
And <laughs> this game needs a refresh. Look at that ground. I mean, I can do the same in a real. <laughs> I'm glad you've come, though I'm afraid there's little in the way of good news. After you left, we reached out to both the Alchemist's Guild and Stillglade Fane and attempted all manner of treatments. But the results were always the same. Whatever the answer is, it's not alchemy or conjury. Their souls is not there. Why did it have to be Yishtola and Uriange and not me? Out of all of us, they are the ones who could feasibly have solved this puzzle. And Elvino's still missing. God, it's all going wrong. Where do we even start? A grave situation indeed. Might I be of some assistance? Oh, hello. You back. Kryl! I did not think you well enough to travel. When word reached me of the plight of our friends, I could not well stay away. As a fellow scion, not to mention your erstwhile mentor, this is one of those times you should feel free to call on me, regardless of my personal circumstances. I... yes, I should have thought of that. Thank you for coming, Kryl. We would welcome your insight. And I should be happy to provide it. Now, what's this I hear about Alphano heading into Imperial territory? That boy always did have some funny ideas. Do you remember the speech he gave when he was accepted to the studium? My life's goal is not less than the salvation of this star. <laughs> And the warrior light is like, what the hell? The has been a source of great embarrassment to him, as you know. But the fact of the matter is, he meant every word and has lived his life accordingly. Yes, he remains altruistic to a fault, but I'm worried he was too fixated on his goals to see the dangers, as has happened before. You needn't be so concerned. Though his values remain the same, Alphano is not the blinkered boy he once was. Slowly but surely, his eyes have been opened, thanks to a certain someone. A certain someone whom he'd be mortified to learn had heard about his little speech. Mum's the word, eh? <laughs> right.
right, I'd better have a look at our patients. They're in the infirmary, I assume. I'll need absolute quiet, so it would be best if I did this alone. If you'll excuse me. All three are in fine physical health. At a glance, I would say they were merely sound asleep. Except for the fact that I couldn't sense the slightest trace of them in their bodies. It's as if their souls have taken leave of their physical forms. That's what Ishtola said. Ah, yes. The Elder Seed Seer made a similar observation. Oh, oops. Well, no Ishtola. <laughs> I've read the report. When you heard this mysterious voice, you described feeling as if you were somewhere else, yes? If we assume the ether which comprises your essence is being drawn to some other place, then it may be possible to follow the trail it leaves behind, just as we did in our search for Thancred. I wasn't around for that, but I can't imagine it was easy. Oh, it wasn't, but that's no reason not to try. I will have need of Master Matoya's crystal eye if I'm even to make the attempt. So I suggest we pay her a visit. this yeah it wasn't funny to get there is there any clues crystal no what oh god da. huh What are you doing? What are you doing to me? So this way. This way. Before we do that, I want to try this bio that I haven't tried yet. Oh, did I put the bomb instead? Damn it. No, I wanted the. Uh... Yeah, I put the bomb. Wrong button. So how potent? So potency is six day. This is one hundred fifteen second ten seconds. They are about the same. Okay.
Rejsa. Damn you. <laughs> you could have been fixed. So that I could fast travel there. But I thought there was a fast travel somewhere around here. Well, there is a cave here. No. Meow meow. Meow. Come on, let's get in. Come to disturb my peace again, have you? I hide myself away in a cave, and still you people insist on pestering me with your problems. She is very nice. Oh, I mistook you for young Watch's name, but I see now you're the sister. Weren't you supposed to be the lively one? I've seen happier faces at a rain sodden burial. Well, I'm sorry to dash your expectations, but the situation isn't exactly conducive to gaiety. That's more like it. Stoller used to spit and hiss like a wildcat, too. Better for a young thing like you to be filled with fire and leave the doom and gloom to your elders. Now, what exactly does this tragic situation of yours have to do with me? If I may, Master Matoya, we have need of your crystal eye once more. Stola is one of the afflicted, is she? Very well. She may be an ungrateful stray, but she's my ungrateful stray, and I'll not see her buried before I am. <laughs> Good grammar. <laughs> Right, let us see what we can see. I'll begin from where our friends first fell, and cast my senses out from there. What is it? Did you find them? But, but, this, this, this doesn't make sense. But, but how is it even possible? How is what possible? Kryle, what did you see? The, th the threads, they just... they just ended. And, and no, I didn't lose track of them. I followed them as far as they went. It's as if... It's as if they were cut off. Could the ether have dissipated if it had? Oh, oh gods! 
Their bodies are just husks. It's like the Broodmother's daughter all over again. No, no, th this is different. The Kalyana girl was already dead, body and soul, when Lakshmi affected her resurrection. Aye, let's not jump to conclusions. If their physical forms yet breathe and show no signs of wasting, then it follows that their souls must still be intact somewhere. But where? That's the question, isn't it, girl? Death has not taken them to the ethereal sea, yet there are no tracks left for us to follow. We're no closer to an answer than when we started. But knowing their souls are still out there is progress of a sort. We just have to keep looking. Pray, excuse me a moment. Yes? I remember, but... What, to Alamigo? We're on our way. That was Lee's. Apparently, a group of Popularis have defected to Alamigo, and Maxima, the envoy Alphano left with, is one of them. I'm sorry. I realize we've barely begun here, but... Go, child, go! You've made up your mind, and life's too short for dithering. I'll do some digging in the meantime and see if there isn't some other method we could use to continue the search. Let's be off then. Oh, not again. The enchantment barely seems to take these days. I'd chalk it up to old age, but I'd rather doubt it's that simple. Before they took ill, Yishtola and Urianger were sharing notes on a thinning of the ether. It seems to be happening all over. Does it now? And here I was all set to blame my woes on that creaking mountain of refuse clogging up the Thaliac. I fear something has gone awry. Still, there's naught to be gained from starting in shadows. You can only do what can be done, and that but one thing at a time. Hey, Kral, I thought you were gonna stay behind. The hell are you doing after here? Here again. <laughs> and wrong turn.
I'm sorry to drag you halfway across the realm, but when Maxima mentioned Alphino, I thought you'd want to hear the news in person. Ah, we meet again. Though I was hoping our reunion would be under more auspicious circumstances. What happened to my brother? Where is Alphino? Never fear, my lady. Your brother was in fine health when I took my leave of him, and I have no reason to assume that has changed. You assume? If you will allow me, I shall endeavor to explain events. Our troubles began not long after we departed Doma. While crossing the burn, we were fired upon by the Emperor's personal guard and forced to make an emergency landing. As we stumbled from the wreckage, our attackers fell upon us again, and we would have perished there and then were it not for the intercession of a third party, a band of mercenaries whose leader claimed to pursue a vendetta against the Assians. This Shadow Hunter, as he styled himself, then escorted us out of the wastes to relative safety. Upon arriving back in civilization, I gathered my Populares colleagues and prepared to flee the Empire. Master Alphino, however, declined the invitation to join us, preferring to continue his investigation into the Assian threat. Well, at least he's not lying in a heap in the burn. Tell us more about these Assian hunters. Who are they? And is Alphino still with them? He is. As to who they are, I'm afraid I have nothing to tell you. Beyond the fact that they root out and destroy Assians, they were unwilling to divulge anything which might serve to identify them. They would not even reveal their next destination. But Master Alphino asked to accompany them all the same. Since parting company with your brother, we've been engaged in a game of cat and mouse with the Emperor's guard. We made our way through province after province, finding the army busy restoring order wherever we went, until we finally arrived here in Alamigo. I cannot thank Commander Aldin enough for giving us such an unexpectedly warm welcome. I'm not inclined to turn away refugees, no matter which land they call home. And if they can tell me how things lie in Garlemald, all the better. Absolutely. <laughs> On that subject, there is much I would tell you. During the course of our journey, we heard tales that an entire rebel army had been slaughtered in the space of a single night. It would seem my former comrades grew tired of putting down uprisings in the conventional manner, and chose instead to bring a formidable new weapon to bear. Details were sparse, but the rumor alone was enough to dampen the flames of rebellion. I have also heard reports that several companies have withdrawn from their designated provinces and begun marching westward. It is my assessment that the Empire's forces are mobilizing for a large-scale military engagement. Westward? You mean they're getting ready to invade Alamigo? We knew this was coming. But not that it would be so soon. We've barely even begun to shore up our defenses. They won't stop an invading army. No, they won't. Dispatch messengers to the Alliance leadership requesting reinforcements, and send word to our officers in the field to hasten completion of those border fortifications. Prepare to meet the Imperials head on! No matter how quickly we act, we still want for time. When the enemy comes into view, our best recourse will be to open negotiations with their commander and see that the ensuing proceedings take as long as possible. Would you and Alize head to Doma and let Lord Hien know about this? I'm sure he'll want to hear about Alphino too. Consider it done. We'll send word when... Throw wide. 
wide the gates. You heard it too. Well, at least we're both still standing. Oh, thank the gods. I thought we'd lost you for a moment there. Why does this keep happening? I wish I knew. Nothing we've tried has brought us any closer to an answer. We'll keep working on it. But first, we need to go and see Lord Hien. And I forgot that my microphone was muted. <laughs> um, this way. Anyway, we're about 40 minutes in, so I'm gonna wrap this one up here, and I'm gonna see you all 
until next time. See you soon, people. Peace.